today is the feast of St. John Chrysostom. St. John Chrysostom is a, one of the great fathers of the church. You know that our Lord Jesus Christ spoke many truths to his apostles, and then they spoke them to the early teachers of the church. And they remembered very well what those apostles said, and they preached them, and they wrote them down, and these saints are called the fathers of the church. And one of them is St. John Chrysostom. When John Chrysostom was born, <coughs> when he was a little baby, and he was just born on the day of his birth, honey bees came. And the bees came, and they flew in and out of the mouth of John Chrysostom as a little bitty baby. And the bees flew into his mouth and flew out of his mouth. They flew into his mouth and out of his mouth, but they did not sting him. And the people saw that this, this baby must be made for something special, and that God was blessing the tongue of this baby, and that he would become a priest, and that he would be a great preacher of the Word of God, that there would be the sweetness of the truth of God would be on his tongue. And sure enough, when John Chrysostom grew up, he became a priest, and then he was made to be the bishop of Constantinople, which was the center of the whole Roman Empire at the time of his life. The emperor lived there. The emperor had moved away from Rome. Constantine had moved away from Rome, and had lived in Constantinople, in Turkey, what is today in the country of Turkey. And he moved there, and that became the center of the Roman Empire. And St. John Chrysostom was there. And there was an empress by the name of Eudoxia. And John Chrysostom was there and was made to be the bishop of Constantinople. And Eudoxia, she used to do many wicked things. She <clears throat> used to steal from the poor, and she used to uh, have uh, false prayers done. And then she used to uh, st steal also from others and uh, did many wicked acts as, 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 as the empress. And John Chrysostom preached against her. And he used to say that she is a wicked woman and she must stop her wicked ways. And Eudoxia was very angry. And uh, the, 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 the empress did not want to listen to St. John Chrysostom. And so she called together bishops. She made a council of bishops. And she summoned St. John Chrysostom to the council. And John Chrysostom says... Empresses and emperors don't call councils. I don't go to your council. Those bishops that you have paid, that they are going to gather together to condemn me, they are not. They are, they are useless. I don't go to your council. I reject your council. And he refused to go to the council. She then had him condemned by these bishops in the council. And they took soldiers and they captured him. And they dragged him away from the city of Constantinople. And when they dragged him away, while he was in the city, he was protecting the widows, he was protecting the poor, he was condemning Eudoxia, and uh, besides preaching the truth, and he was thrown into exile a couple of times, until eventually he would die in one of the trips into exile that Eudoxia sent him on. And one of the great questions is that, or one of the examples of St. John Chrysostom, is that there are many duties of the priest, and many duties of the bishop following Christ. One of them is to preach the truth. We must preach the doctrine of the faith. We must condemn the errors. So, but a bishop, a bishop does not only preach the doctrine and condemn the errors. He must also condemn the wicked men of his time. He must condemn the wicked souls who are doing wicked things. Remember the St. John the Baptist. John the Baptist was preaching in the desert and there was no problem. As long as John the Baptist preached the gospel and preached about Christ and preached about penance, there was no problem. But what made John the Baptist get into trouble was that St. John the Baptist, he criticized Herod because he had a second wife. He said, this woman is not your wife. You do not you have left your wife, she is not your wife, and you are committing adultery. And Herod, who had committed adultery so many times, it didn't bother him. But his wife was very, his false wife was very disturbed. And she was the one that got her daughter to dance in front of Herod. <coughs> And then Herod beheaded the Saint John the Baptist. And so sometimes the bishops, they have the duty to speak out against the great evil men of their day. And St. John Chrysostom, it tells in his life, he received so many tortures, beaten by the soldiers, dragged into exile, and then recalled back from exile, and then put into exile again, because he never stopped condemning Eudoxia. He never stopped condemning her because of her wicked ways. And if he had not condemned her, if he had only preached the gospel, if he had only taken care of the poor, if he didn't say anything negative, he wouldn't have been put in exile. He wouldn't have died in exile. 
He would not have been tortured. He would have had a very peaceful reign in Constantinople, but John Chrysostom refused such a thing. Because the bishop is the general in the army of God, and he must imitate Jesus Christ. Remember Jesus Christ, what did he do? He condemned the Pharisees and the scribes. He called them the brood of vipers. He condemned them because it is necessary when there is great wickedness amongst evil men that are in positions of authority that this evil must be condemned. And they must be called out by name. And one cannot only say in these cases that, oh, you know, there's bad people in the world, there's heretics in the world, be careful of heretics and be careful of bad people. This was the problem of Pope Leo XIII. Pope Leo XIII he said that Americanism was a heresy, and he condemned it in 1895, or 1897, one of those years. And he wrote the heresy on, Amer on, Her on Americanism. He also condemned other the heresies of our modern times. But he never condemned a single heretic. And when, when the latter on Americanism came over to America, Cardinal Gibbons, who was one of the worst Americanists, he picked up the, in the cyclical and he said, I agree with this encyclical, but there is no Americanist here. And so he was never condemned. He was never corrected. And so that the Americanist heresy was condemned, but Isaac Hecker, the one who began the heresy, he was not condemned. And the, 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 uh, the, 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 the ones who were responsible for the heresy were not condemned. And so the heresy just continued. It is not sufficient to just generically condemn errors. It is necessary that the key speakers of those errors and also individuals that are pushing these errors or great wicked deeds, they must be condemned. This is what Christ did in the Gospel. It is what the saints have done down the ages. And what happened to St. John Chrysostom? He died in exile. While he was in exile, he was sick. As he was being, as many times, however many times, second or third or fourth time being put in exile because of Eudoxia. And he went to, the, to, the, to a place of a martyr, St. Basilius. And Basilius, he was praying in front of the tomb of the martyr, Basilius. And Basilius rose up from his place of martyrdom. And he said, John Chrysostom, tomorrow you will be with me. And so when he heard the Basilius tell him that I will be with you, the, the, the martyr rose up from his bones out of his, out of his uh, the altar where John Chrysostom was praying in front of him. Tomorrow you will be with me. So St. John Chrysostom Though he was not martyred physically, he was a martyr of persecution of the heart. He was persecuted, he was beaten, he was because he spoke the truth. And those who speak the truth against the errors of our times will always be persecuted. It was a case of St. John Chrysostom, it was a case of St. John the Baptist, and it will always be the case. One of the great troubles of our times is the modern bishops. They are not condemning by name the most wicked men of our times. And when they don't do that, they cry to heaven for vengeance from God. The bishops in America should all be speaking of the wickedness of Obama. And they should be condemning him. And in, this, in, in our situation in the society of St. Pius X, we must denounce the wickedness of Bishop Fillet, who is doing wicked deeds. He is teaching a new doctrine which is leading souls to hell. He is handing out wicked and unjust punishments, such as the punishment of Father Pino, by which he told the priest of the society who wrote a letter, who actually signed, who did a spell check on a letter that was critical to Bishop Vallée. And he told Father Pino, you cannot celebrate Mass even privately. You cannot hear confessions. It, and you cannot preach any sermons. You cannot teach any catechism. You are essentially defrocked from your priesthood because you criticized me. And this is a most grave sin that cries to heaven. It is the duty of a bishop to be a defender of the rights of God and not the rights of himself. A defender of the honor of God and the honor of his holy church and not the honor of himself. The bishop is a shepherd who is supposed to go out and just lay down his life for the sake of his sheep. Who is supposed to go down and look to his own death that the sheep might live. Who is supposed to go out and pull the sheep out of the pit. And what is this shepherd doing? He is saying, you must protect me. You must honor me. You must love me because I am the superior general. 
And I know best what to do about all the things that are going on with regard to the society in Rome. And I know better than Archbishop Lefebvre and so on and so forth. But what does he do? Wicked act after wicked act. The wicked expulsion of Bishop Williamson, which was inexcusable. Taking up that bishop who had not done any, any serious act of disobedience since the time he was ordained a priest in 1976 until the time that he was expelled in 2012. Thrown in the streets without any money, without any support, without any place to stay. When the Code of Canon Law says that <coughs> even in the case of a legitimate expulsion, <coughs> the bishop is required to provide for the sustenance of the priest that he removes, that he punishes. And the priests are thrown in the streets. 72-year-old Father Sauer, thrown into the streets. The, the, the Father Pinot, who refused to be in function as a priest. And why? Because of a new theology, a new direction, which is wicked. And this wickedness must be denounced. St. John Chrysostom, you would denounce the wickedness of Eudoxia, and it is a duty of priests of our time to denounce the wickedness that we face. The wickedness of the Pope, Francis, who is saying and doing wicked things. He is, he is, does wickedness when he says that atheists can go to heaven as long as they follow their conscience. And then when he, when he says that who is he to judge homosexuals when he is the judge of all judges. And who is he to judge homosexuals? He is the judge. We go to him to learn the judgments of God. And he who is the judge of the judgments of God says who am I to judge? And by doing this he mocks God. And he brings down the fire from heaven upon his own head. And just as in the past, the church had priests and bishops who stood up against the evil men of their day. And we are following the example of Daniel. What did Daniel do? He was not a bishop. He was not a priest. He was not even an adult. When Daniel was 12 years old, he was only a boy. And the two judges of the Jewish people found Susanna guilty of adultery when she was the most pure of women. And she was perfectly innocent. And if they were the ones that were impure, they were the ones that committed adultery, uh, adultery, and they were the wicked ones. And they said, we not only are the judges, but we are the witnesses. And they said, we saw, two witnesses saw Susanna commit evil. And we say that she is judged because we are the judges, and we judge her because we are also the witnesses. And the people said, what can be done? They are the judges. And they brought Susanna to be killed. And her husband wept. And her family wept, and they all wept, knowing that Susanna was innocent. And the people also suspected that Susanna was innocent, but the judges are the judges. And so they said, what can we do? And one boy at the age of 12 stood up on a rock and said, you do not send that woman to, and you do not, Israel, why do you condemn innocent blood on this day? For it is the judges that are wicked, it is the judges that shall be condemned. And Daniel was filled with the voice of God. And the three young men in the fiery furnace condemned Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar converted because of that condemnation. Those two judges did not convert. And they were sent to hell. Therefore, the priest must judge. And he must judge against the, uh, the, the clear, <coughs> open wickedness of especially the rulers of the people. Some of them will convert, like Nebuchadnezzar, who is now in heaven, judged by the three young men. Some of them will not convert, like the two judges who are now in hell. But in any case, the honor of God, the truth of God, the justice of God demands that the priest of God, when he sees these grave public acts of wickedness, he must denounce them. And this is the example given to us by St. John Chrysostom, who was a most beautiful honey speaker. His, mill, his voice was filled with honey, and he spoke so many beautiful and sweet words. But when his children were attacked, when the poor of his city were attacked, when the widows were robbed, when there was great evil being done, the honey-sweet John Chrysostom became a lion. And the honey-sweet St. John Chrysostom stood up and denounced most boldly, without fear, the woman of Eudoxia. And there was this bold speaking that caused St. Thomas Becket to be put to death, to be killed, because he spoke boldly against the wicked king, Henry II. And as a result, he was killed. And it is necessary in our times, as in all times, to follow the example of the saints, to follow the example of the ancients. We must speak clearly the truth, condemn clearly the errors, but not only in a theoretical way. We must show 
how the gospel is not an empty book, but it is a book that is alive in 2014. It is a book that applies now. It is a book that is being followed by some, very few, a book that is being rejected by most. And it is a book that lives now. And therefore, there are Herods in this book of our times. There are Eudoxias in this book of our times. There are Pilots, there are Caiaphases, there are Annases, there are Judases. And it is necessary that many of them must be pointed out. There are times when we don't point out everything, but many of them must. And we follow the example of our Lord Jesus Christ and of the great saints. So St. John Christendom was a great saint who was not a martyr, but who died like unto a martyr, who died because of the harshness with which he was treated. After St. John Chrysostom died, four days later, in the city of Constantinople, where he was the bishop, there came a great hailstorm. And in the hailstorm, four of the most wicked individuals, of which one was the Empress Eudixia herself, died. They were killed by the wrath of God, and the people were saved at the death of St. John Chrysostom. And this is the case. One of the temptations is of the wicked men. You are a prior. You're the head of this priory. You're a bishop. You're the head of this diocese. If you get thrown out of the diocese, if you get put into exile, if you get removed from the priory, if you get transferred, you will not be able to protect these people. You must be careful. You must be prudent. You must not be too bold against the wicked and wicked superiors. You must not be too bold against the wicked men of your time. Because if you are, you will be thrown into exile. And in exile, you will not be able to protect the people. If John Chrysostom had been gentle, he would never have been put in exile. And the wickedness would have increased and increased and increased. But because St. John Chrysostom spoke out, he prevented some of the wickedness. And when he died, the vengeance of God came down upon his enemies. And this happened many times in the lives of the saints. The vengeance of God came down upon the enemies and killed them. And the people were saved. And so therefore, it is a warning to priors within the society of St. Pius X. A warning to priests within the society. You can do greater good by being quiet. You can do greater good by being by, being, by gently teaching the people to still be against Vatican II, even though the superiors are in favor of Vatican II. You can, you can gently try to guide them. What is happening? These priests are becoming tools of the devil. For these priests that are not condemning boldly the grave and public errors of our, our wicked superiors, they are playing to the hands of the wicked superiors. Now what is happening? What is happening is that the souls under their care, whom they are trying to protect, are falling through their fingers. The protection isn't working, and in fact it's backfiring. Because the priests, who seem to be good, they keep the people in the wicked organization. You see, Father so-and-so, he's conservative, so Bishop Fillet must not be so bad. Father so-and-so is still saying the Vatican II is bad. So the, so the society's new doctrine must not be that bad. And they slide away from the faith. And who is responsible for this slide? Who are the ones most responsible? Not the liberal priests, but the conservative priests. These are the key to the victory of the revolution. The conservative priests who say, I'm still going to maintain the old ideas as much as I can. I just won't speak as clearly as I used to. And then the people will then gently, gently, gently slide away from the faith. <coughs> this is worse. <clears throat> we must stand clearly for the truth, clearly against the errors, condemn those that do public wicked acts against, these, against the good of souls, <clears throat> and, and we must follow the example of the saints and not the foolish prudence of the modern world which says, keep your position, be gentle, be patient, work slowly in order to overcome the, the evil in the world. It won't work. It hasn't worked for 2,000 years, and it will not work today. You follow the example of the saints. Close that God bless you all. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.